Alright. <laughs> Camera rolling. Hello everybody. <laughs> uh, my name is Lupita Carasquillo and I am a member of Brown and Proud Press. Uh, and this video that we're making right now uh, is going to be the way that we connect to you and get the opportunity to teach you about what zines are. Uh, we can teach you how to make zines, uh, as well as a bunch of other stuff, which I'm about to get into. Uh, you're going to see other people from BPP as well. Uh, you're going to learn about them and their process and why they make zines. Uh, and I'm going to try not to say zines so much until I actually explain what it is. Um, so zines are a uh, form of independent publishing. Uh, we make zines about our struggles and our stories and things that uh, are important to us. Uh, I think zines are rooted in DIY culture, do-it-yourself culture, where you don't need a lot of supplies or money or access to a lot of things in order to make them. Uh, and that's a really important uh, form of art because we know that not everyone has money to buy, you know, a bunch of paints or really fancy equipment for, uh, you know, making other things. So um, with zine making, all you need is paper, a pen, um, and you can, or a camera, or, or a lot of uh, different things, and you can make a zine. So, so zines uh, are not just uh, physical things that you have. Uh, zine making is a whole uh, community and culture. Um, we have been able to uh, travel to different places and meet other zinesters and be able to vend and trade uh, and learn about what different people across the country are doing. Um, and these are young people, these are people of color, these are um, folks that are telling stories that the mainstream media is not telling. So we uh, make zines to tell real stories from ourselves um, because we know that there's a lot of misinformation about people out there and we just want to give a true accurate portrayal of, uh, for me, what a 24 year old uh, woman in America right now is doing, um, especially at a time like this. So we, um, we use zines to challenge the dominant narrative um, which means that we publish stories from people of color uh, and queer people and any kind of marginalized person and we ensure that that is being put out to give truth to their experience, to validate their experience, um, and to make other people feel less alone. Uh, because the dominant narrative right now is a story, a script, they are in the news headlines, they're in storylines of books and shows, um, and they usually um, portray people of color, queer people, trans people, um, as a very limited thing, as a, a persona or a character or a stereotype um, that's not healthy, and that comes with any part of your identity. So challenging the dominant narrative was really important for us because we knew that if we talked to 10 people who were all undocumented and we asked them about their experience, they might have a few things in common, but we're gonna get 10 different stories and each one of those stories should be told um, and not just like the basic cookie cutter mainstream version of that. So that's a thing that we try to do in our zine making, um, but we also try to do that in the events that we put on to uh, both teach and share uh, poetry and zines. Um, we have events where the community can get together, uh, have fun, and talk about zines, be able to buy artwork from other creators, um, but also just to have a space where we live out the values we talk about in our zines, you know, to have safe spaces, spaces where we can get together and have a good time um, and really enrich each other and stuff. So that's uh, another thing that we create outside of just the physical zines that we make. So we're offering this, the world stories told by us. Um, and we also believe that zine making is a very legitimate form of telling history. Um, history is not just found in textbooks, it can be found in a lot of other uh, places and zines are a primary source um, for information of what is being produced by people today, especially young people and people that don't have a platform to tell their stories right now. Um, so I'm gonna pause 
and we're gonna keep going with this whatever we go. Okay, bye. <laughs> Cut. Action. Hi, my name is Luz Pangdaleno Flores. I'm um, one of the BBB members from. Uh, damn, I need to start over. <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh my it God. is not breaking. Yes. So you just want to focus on zines, what zines are to me? Okay, hi, my name is Luz Magdaleno Flores. I've been a zine maker since 2015, so like five years now. Um, but uh, I was actually talking to Lupita the other day and I was telling her that I started doing layout design in high school for our school newspaper when I was a sophomore in high school, so like a while ago. <laughs> and I think that prepared me for like designing zines with Brown and Proud Press. Um, so I started making zines with Alvaro Savala, which is one of the illustrators um, behind BBP's art, um, for example, our logo. Um, and this is one of our first scenes, and it was released in January 12, 2015. Um, and it was called Serio. And in this one, we uh, shone a light on a lot of activists from across the nation. Um, and it was really fun to make this. It's super DIY. And then this one, this issue was um, in dedication of the Chicano movement. When I think of what being brown and proud means to me, it's definitely being like a Chicana, um, identifying with being brown um, as a Mexicana. And um, I'm really proud about this issue that we did. Um, showcasing a lot of um, badass Mexican American Chicano identified people. Um, but after that, I went on to join Brown and Pop Press. Uh, Brown and Pop Press was started by other folks in 2011, um, and I became friends with them. I went to an open meeting that they had, uh, where we can do like a like a creative write up time or whatever, and I went. Um, and I just clicked immediately with what the mission was for Brown and Pop Press and bringing people together and showcasing uh, creatives through independent publications. And I got involved right away. Um, we made home scenes together. Um, a lot of anthologies that I helped design um, and basically bring to life by printing. Printing, if you make zines, um, I think printing is one of the biggest challenges because all printers have different programming and just laying out your zine in a particular way and getting the pages right is a whole art to itself. Um, it's challenging, but it's really rewarding. And I am also a photographer. Um, one of my favorite zines that I've made for myself is Bajito and Suavecito. Um, this was shortlisted actually by um, Broken Pencil in Canada. and. It's pretty fun. I just like taking pictures of lowriders or like portraits of friends or like badass people that I just find like, it's just beautiful. <laughs> I like capturing things of um, that relate to my identity. And so lowriders, of course, being from Southern California, I have to cover um, wherever I see them, no matter where I am. Um, and another zine that I put out was a poetry chapbook this was years in the making, actually. It started out by writing poetry, uh, mostly revolving around romance in my own diaries um, and having this idea of making a chapbook that I designed from, uh, literally I had sketches that I wanted it to be a Loteria Pera, um, Pera to be synonymous with being like, you know, something that is kind of you shame women for being or um, et cetera, but also my mom, my grandma's, great grandma's favorite fruit. And so in my altares growing up, I always had uh, peras and honoring the women in my family, my ancestors. And so I wanted to do that. And then the Virgen that I, uh, my family prays to is the Virgen de Zapopan. So I wanted to f feature that in the back as kind of being like a protective um, spell for whoever gets the scene or for my own poetry, wherever this goes, you know, you put out a zine and it's like your baby, you work so hard on it, um, and you put in work to figure out what you want your, your design to look like, um, and so you want it to be protected, whoever's hands it, it lands on, you know, um, this is, 
this was I'm so proud of this zine even though like I I didn't submit this for any awards or anything like that I just kind of printed a small batch and like sold them at zine fest but it was it's it's one of my favorites um, I also like took a picture of like a like a little to toallita that my family um, made in Mexico and so I included that in the layout too and so that's something that you could do with zines is that you don't just have to use um, images from the internet or digital images captures or whatever I use stickers um, you could use stamps I physically stamped some of my zines um, I include selfies um, so some of your favorite selfies you can also like you know include them um, you could get real creative and I think that's one of my favorite things about zines is that you can like make make it about whatever you want um, and cre like create a platform for yourself for your art um, and not really having anyone censor you or give you rules on what that has to look like or how you have to spell things right um, I'm uh, bilingual and so I always felt like growing up as trying to be a writer uh, going to school for journalism I was always corrected for, like you know harshly for being bilingual and I think that um, Brown and Proud Press was a platform that didn't shun me for that instead we celebrated each other for writing poems or stories um, that were in Spanglish you know um, or whatever language that you want to print your zines in and we celebrate that you don't have to like assimilate you know so yeah Hello, my name is Peter Pandy, a.k.a. Red Panda, a.k.a. Peter Pangy, a.k.a. The Independent Variable, a.k.a. On Your Computer Screen and Yet To Be, uh, you know, whatever. But, thank you for tuning in. All right, thank you for uh, giving us your time. Um, I'm a Los Angeles native. I graduated from USC. Uh, I also have a degree in culinary arts. When I was at USC, we studied a, a kind of theory of multiple like, multiple disciplines called polymath and I think like the concept of having multiple dis disciplines or perspectives really comes through in zine making I moved to Chicago two years ago and I became a high school teacher I know don't throw anything at me I don't have any homework for you but um, uh, yeah I've been rocking with uh, BPP for a long time I don't know exactly when I went to my first uh, event but a couple of cumbias and a couple stanzas later here I am the Youngest member of the group. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, I am a poet. I put out uh, uh, books in the past. I put out zines of my um, poetry. I have a beautiful cat. Priscilla has been uh, crawling around here. But uh, yeah, I think it's a great um, kind of like postmodern or like new school way to get your ideas out there uh, whatever you're into you know if you're into photography or poetry or telling a story or just telling or sharing your point of view whatever however you want to do it a zine is a great way to um, expose people to your art and get feedback or your expression and get feedback and uh, especially now uh, it's nice to get something that is like paper in your hand with kind of like the intimacy of a birthday card, you know? Like, you know, like the person who uh, is giving it to you or the person it's from, like, uh, made it, like, themselves. So, I hope you guys um, enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey, you know what? I hope you guys enjoy it. Cut here. Start here. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey! Enjoy it. Enjoy. Hey! Hey. Anyway, so that's me, Peter Pandy. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Mayra Cortez. I've been part of Brown and Proud Press for two years. I discovered Brown and Proud Press by um, finding one of their events on Facebook. And it was cool. I saw a lot of great performers, poets, and musicians. And it was just a great vibe. I loved everything about it. You know, um, being part of Brown and Proud Press, we center people of color, black, brown, indigenous um, folks. And it was just cool to be part of a community that I felt I belonged in. 
and um, I wanted to join because I was a photographer and I use photography as a way to cope with like depression and anxiety. I really get lost in like creating things and it's just easy and accessible to have a camera. Well, that's not true. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I joined Friend of a Press and it was really cool. Like everyone is a badass creative. They all have their own mediums and we come together to create zines. Um, zines are very beautiful. Uh, the work that I do um, on my zines is photography and I'm very body positive. So for me, it's important to show different body types, um, you know, to feel liberated and yeah, it's beautiful. So it really helped me create uh, more or focus more on what I want to do and, you know, share my voice in the zine. So that's me. <laughs>